Hey guys, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be starting a romance reading vlog. Here's where I'm at. <laughs> I haven't been reading a lot of romance in 2020 and today right now as I'm speaking to you it's the night that Biden won the election in America and I'm feeling very hopeful and very dare I say romantic for the first time in like months. I don't know I'm just feeling like I'm in the mood where I need some really like light-hearted feel-good romance books like I don't get in this mood very often you know 2020 has been quite the horror show and I usually just I'm just in the mood for horror I guess when the world is horror <laughs> but right now I'm in the mood for some romance and, and some of my favorite authors have recently released some romance books that I would really like to get to because I haven't gotten around to them yet because I haven't been reading romance. Some of the books that I would like to get to in this video but I don't know for sure if I will because like I don't want to put too much pressure on myself to read certain books. I just want to read whatever I'm currently in the mood for you know but one of the ones I definitely want to get to is The Girl in the Love Song by Emma Scott because Emma Scott is one of my favorite authors and I just really want to read. This is her new book and she just released a second book in the series and I haven't even read the first one yet so definitely going to be reading this one. I think I'm going to start with this one tonight. And then I would also like to read Crazy Stupid Bromance by Lisa K. Adams. This is the third book in the Bromance Book Club series and Bromance Book Club is one of my favorite romance books ever. The second book was just okay for me but I have really high hopes for this third book. And then two other releases that I'm pretty interested in. One of them is One Hot Italian Summer by Karina Hall and I only heard about this book from Jess's channel Peace Love Books. She talked about this book very highly and I forget what it's about but it sounded really interesting and so I added it to my wish list. And then I also would like to read Happily Letter After by Vi Kaland and Penelope Ward and I don't really know anything about that one either except for the fact that I've read books I've read a lot of books from that author combo and they're always like a hit or miss for me. Like I either really love them or really don't like them. So I mean, we'll see. But these are just four romance books that have been on my radar lately that I've been meaning to get to. And what better time to get to them than when I'm in like the best fucking mood. And I'm just really in a romance mood. I don't know why I can't explain these things. It just, the mood hits, you know? And then I'm like, yes. So I think I'm gonna start with The Girl and the Love Song tonight. I actually just ended up downloading the ebook because I don't wanna wait, you know? I don't wanna wait for a physical copy to come in. I just, the mood just hit right now. So let's get it. I will update you with my thoughts in the morning. <laughs> Good morning. It is the next morning and last night I actually stayed up pretty late reading The Girl in the Love Song by Emma Scott. I got to page like 206 out of like 440 something and it still says I'm only 44% of the way through the book even though I feel like I was reading for like literally forever last night. But so far I'm actually really enjoying this book despite it has a lot of tropes that I usually don't really like because okay for part one of the book part one is like 70 ish pages or so and the characters are main like love interest characters that we're following are like 13 14 ish years old and then now at part two i'm still in part two 200 pages into the book and the characters are like 18 right now and i usually hate going into a romance book like this thinking i'm going to be reading about adults and i'm actually reading about teenagers for like more than half the book i actually am really enjoying it for some reason i i just am i I really like Miller's character like Miller is like we follow both of the main characters point of views Miller and Violet and I do like Violet too but just not as much like I don't know there's something about Miller's point of view that I really enjoy reading I guess he just has a really like similar personality type to mine and he like plays music so I don't know but usually I usually I hate the best friends to lovers trope I just usually find it to be so like bleh, boring but this one's actually like really cute so far especially since i've been reading about them like since they were 13 14 ish and i just feel for like violet's situation like violet wants to be a doctor and like her family is just like not it's not like they're not supportive but her parents just like argue all the time and it's like really hard for her so like i just feel a lot for violet and then miller like with his family situation like he has a really unique family situation as well and I just feel like they're really like fleshed out characters and uh, I'm planning on finishing it maybe today after I get off of work. I'm supposed to go to work this morning until 4 and then who knows maybe I can try and finish it tonight. Uh, it's like really freaking windy as hell today and I couldn't barely sleep last night because of it. So that kind of sucks. I just got off of work a little bit early so I'm at Barnes and Noble. 
because I want to see if they have crazy stupid bromance. <laughs> yes, they had it. And it's beautiful. Look how beautiful it is. So, it's a little bit later in the night. I've just been sitting here chilling on the couch. I've been listening to folklore on my speaker and just reading this book on my phone. I'm nearly 300 pages into it now and I'm still enjoying it, but every now and then I just find myself rolling my eyes <laughs> just because it definitely has a lot more high school drama than I was anticipating because, you know, a lot of these characters are still like 18 years old and I'm just not a huge fan of the like best friends to lovers trope. I just really like get irritated with it fast. I don't know why. I just want something that's more like forbidden, I guess, and more like not like they've known each other since they were 13. But I do really love Emma Scott's writing and I do really love her characters, even though Violet is kind of driving me nuts as a main character, but I really do enjoy Miller for the most part still. I don't know, but there's definitely some things that are really bothering me about like the storyline and the plot, but I can't get into that without spoilers. So maybe I'll talk to you about some spoilers after I finish the book. So far, it's still okay. It's not like amazing, but it's, still good enough that I want to see where it goes and if like in the next part of the book if they're going to be like older finally because I had no idea they would be 18 for this long <laughs> of the book. Whatever. I'm just going to keep listening to folklore and try to finish it. Look at this baby. Tinky. Hello. It is some hours later. It's like 11 o'clock at night and I finished The Girl in the Love Song and <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this book. I think I'm probably gonna end up giving this like three stars. I just kind of feel like underwhelmed by it, I guess. I guess I should have known that this wasn't gonna be my thing just from like the girl in the love song. I just don't usually <laughs> like romances that follow like musicians, I guess. Like I like books that kind of focus on, you know, actors and like the film industry and stuff. But when it comes to musicians and stuff, like I just, don't care and it had one of my least favorite tropes of like best friends to lovers and it also had this thing where they were like 18 they were teenagers for like literally 75 to 85 percent of the book which i did not expect the heck like look at this book cover you're telling me that this book is ya like that is a grown-ass man on that book cover like i don't understand and I don't know, I mean, for one thing, the book was way too long. It was like 460 pages on my ebook. Like, that is way too long. It did not need to be that long. And like, in my opinion, I just feel like the ending got way too like dramatic for me and just kind of like cringy. Like, I don't know, I just lost interest after so long. I don't know, I feel like anytime there's a book that revolves around like a musician, it just follows the typical cliche storyline and it just really makes me cringe and it like gets under my skin. And this is like kind of a spoiler for the book, so I'll put a spoiler over the screen for while I'm talking about this, but like I hate in romance books when we follow like one of them is a musician and then they just like get famous overnight from like a viral video. Like, it's just so unrealistic to me. Like, I know it happens sometimes, like, for people like Justin Bieber or, like, Shawn Mendes, like, whatever. They upload one YouTube video, and then it goes viral and gets millions of views, and then a record label, I guess, reaches out and, like, offers them a record deal. It's just so unrealistic to me. Like, there are so many talented, attractive people in the world that don't have these opportunities, and it's just, like, so unrealistic for me. Like, I can't help but cringe and roll my eyes when he's, like, literally... He just has one video that goes viral and gets like 3 million views and then he gets a phone call from a record label in LA and they're gonna pay for his flight and like fly him out there and then of course he like lands the record deal and then he's opening on a tour for Ed Sheeran first thing and then he's on the cover of Rolling Stone and then he's headlining a world tour. It's just like, dude, seriously? Like, I don't know. It just kind of made me like roll my eyes and I was just kind of like, oh my god. Like literally any time I read a book about a musician, they always have this where it's like this unrealistic like launch into fame and it's just, it just kind of takes me out of it to be honest. And I don't know, like the romance between these two was cute, but again, like I just don't love the friends to lovers trope. It's just not my favorite. So it was like fine. I just feel like this was a book that like, it's a decent book. But it just really wasn't for me. It had a lot of things that I don't typically like in romances. But I just assumed because it's Emma Scott, I wouldn't mind as much. And to be fair, I didn't mind as much, I guess. I still gave it three stars. Emma Scott is, like, such a hit-or-miss author for me, you know? Because, like, The Butterfly Project and Someday Someday are some of my favorite books 
of all time like those are some of my favorite romances that i've ever read ever then she has like a five minute life which i also thought was pretty ugh, whatever and then this one is just like mediocre but i did hear that the next book that's in this series because i guess this is the first book in a new series from her the second book is a male male romance with two characters from this book and so I'm kind of interested in reading that still because because after reading Someday Someday, I do love the way that she writes male male romance. So I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to read the second book. Maybe the second book is better. This one was just, it was okay. I didn't hate it, but it just wasn't what I wanted from it, I guess. I think the next book I would like to read for this video is Crazy Stupid Bromance, but I'm probably not going to start this until tomorrow because I think I've had enough romance for the night. <laughs> the song ends and I gasp at the lightning that has replaced my veins. Hello again. It's about like 1.20 in the afternoon. I'm finally laying on the couch all cozy with the light on because it's actually pretty dark in here today because it's really cloudy out. I'm about to start Crazy Stupid Bromance and I'm really excited about this and I just have a feeling that I'm gonna really love this one. And I'm watching Tink who's on the floor being annoying. Tink! My fave candle at the moment. Frozen Lake. From Bed Bath and from Bath and oh my God from Bath and Body Works oh my God yes I also put on the cozy cabin ambiance with the rain sounds hopefully Tank will chill out and fall asleep here pretty soon. about 3 30 in the afternoon right now and i haven't been able to read as much as i would like to because tank has been all over the place but my sister just got home so she has them in the other room and i am 84 pages into the book so far and i kind of just jumped into this one blindly you know because uh this is the third book in the series and i really enjoyed the first two books in the series so i didn't even really like take a second to look at what this book is even about before i jumped into it so i'm having trouble like remembering if we've been introduced to these characters in the previous books or not because neither of them sound very familiar to me and for some reason i was thinking that this book was going to be the romance for the russian character <laughs> that's like in the bromance book club but i guess it's not so it's following this girl alexis who is best friends with the girl liv from the second book and liv is Thea's sister from the first book so I guess that's how they're all connected and then this guy Noah is like her best friend so uh, I guess they've only known each other for like 12 months but I guess this girl Alexis actually worked at the restaurant where the sexual harassment went down from the last book so now she's kind of dealing with that and she just owned she just opened her own cafe that's like a cat cafe but I think I just stumbled upon another friends to lovers romance what the fuck how did this happen i just keep picking these books up without reading the description because i do love these authors and i trust that i'll love them anyways and like i do I, i'm enjoying it i guess but i don't know it's like it's kind of like random i guess because the storyline like so far what's happening is that we're just following alexis and then it talks about this in the description so this isn't a spoiler or anything but she this woman comes into her cat cafe shop and she says she's her sister and that she didn't even know she had a sister and that she needs her help with something and so now she's like using noah noah's like computer skills to like look into this girl and like what she's claiming and so far it's fine i don't know i'm not really like super into either of the characters yet i just think it's like okay but i'm just gonna continue reading and see if it picks up and it's kind of weird because this guy noah isn't even technically a part of the bromance book club like he's not in the book club but i guess they're trying to get him in the book club and they're all like friends with him so yeah i don't know it's weird it feels like this book is related to the other two books but also like not as much and something i really do love though about these bromance book club books is when they talk about like 
why people read romance because he's like how do you think the book ends it's a romance i would assume they end up together and live happily ever after and he's like exactly all romances end that way even though readers know the minute they pick up romances how they're going to end they still read them loyally why do you suppose that is he's like the sex no wrong answer it's the journey it's how they get to that happily ever after that matters and makes these books so special and instructive it's about the journey there is no more universal story than of two people working together through their shit to overcome huge obstacles and find their way to happiness. But every journey is different, every obstacle unique. And it's in that unique journey that we find lessons of our own lives. I think that's really beautifully said. And I do think that's exactly why most people read romance novels. <sighs> I'm 150 pages in and I'm still not loving it. But like there was this one part that almost just made me cry right now. But I think it's just because I'm like overly emotional today but i think the main reason why i don't really enjoy friends to lovers romance is because i feel like it always follows this same freaking plot like it's always like they're friends and they both have feelings but neither of them want to admit their feelings and it's just like really boring for me to read their inner monologue of like them being like but if only he knew i wanted him and then there's always something that happens like they either kiss or they're like about to have sex or something and then one of them is like no because it's happening too fast and not the way they always imagined it to be and then the other one automatically assumes that it's like rejection and then they're embarrassed and then there's like this miscommunication and they leave and go their separate ways and then they're like no i think i ruined our friendship and they're like i don't know it's just it's always the same shit like the same exact thing just happened in the last book that i just read i really don't like the friends to lovers trope i don't know why it's just incredibly boring and i just know what's gonna happen and i know where it's going and I just don't like reading about their inner monologue. I just find it to be really boring. Like I much prefer something more spicy, like Hate to Love, where there's like banter and they act like they don't like each other, but they secretly do. It's just so much more fun. It has been a few hours. It's like 11 o'clock at night and I finished Crazy Stupid Bromance. I actually flew through this entire book in like one sitting, but I'm not gonna lie. It's because by the halfway point, I was just skimming because I did not care. <laughs> I'm really upset that I spent full price money on this book yesterday at Barnes and Noble only to be so let down. I feel like I'm gonna give this book two stars. Like I just really, I didn't have a good time reading this. And I'm sad because I really do enjoy this series. Like Bromance Book Club is one of my favorite books from last year. And then I didn't really like love Undercover Bromance, but I think I definitely enjoyed it more than most of the romance readers that I saw reading it did. I actually thought that one was really decent. I think I gave it like four stars, but this one is like a two star for me. And maybe, I don't know if this is just a me thing because, you know, I just haven't been in the mood to re read romance this year. But also, I don't know if this is, like, fair to judge this book this harshly because I just really don't like the best friends to lovers trope. Also, I just found these two main characters to be so boring. I didn't really care about their problems and their life and their relationship. I didn't really care about her whole family situation with like finding out about her sister and then finding out more about that family and then the drama that was happening there just made me really uncomfortable and I don't really like the way it got resolved and handled. I did not agree <laughs> with things that were happening and it just made me uncomfortable to read about it for so long. I just feel like it was a real distraction from the romance actually happening. And then even the romance was like completely forgettable. I feel like both of these main characters are just so flat and boring. Like, I don't know if it's just me, but I just, I found them to be really boring. And I know that Noah, God, I even forgot his name. I thought his name was Nick for some reason. Noah, the main love interest character, he's supposed to be this kind of like dorky, nerdy guy, but then he has these like temper moments where he gets really mad and it's kind of like, I don't know, it's strange. Like I know he's doing it to be like protective of her or whatever, but like I just didn't really get a grasp on his character, I guess. I don't know. Like I would still read another book from this author. I think it was just this specific trope combined with the fact that I didn't really like these characters. It just made for an unenjoyable experience for me, but I would still check out more of the, this author's books in the future just because I do love the Bromance Book Club and the only reason why I'm giving this one two stars as opposed to like one is because I did enjoy the scenes of Noah with like the guys in the Bromance Book Club. I still thought those scenes were pretty like fun and cute and lighthearted, but then the rest of the book was like just i don't know it was weird it was like some weird family drama it made me uncomfortable anyways after two books back to back that were just kind of like meh i'm starting to regret doing this entire vlog and i'm like 
wondering if I should just scrap this whole thing. I do have hope for this third one I want to read, One Hot Italian Summer, because I just wanted to check to make sure before I start this book that this is not a friends to lovers romance because I think we've all learned our lesson. And I just checked and it's not. And the thing that intrigues me about this book is that the main girl female character is a writer, which is usually a great sign for me because I love books that follow writers. I don't know why, it's just a thing, I love it. Then also, I think it's kind of forbidden because the love interest in this book is her agent's ex-husband who's a single dad to this like 10 year old boy now i guess like i don't know it could be like you know it's really cold in this room it's like 50 degrees so like it could be nice to read a book that's like summery and like forbidden romance right now so i don't know i might try this one tonight i might just start it i might give this one a go but if not i've been listening to the audiobook for grown by tiffany d jackson for the whole morning i'm like 60 percent of the way through the audiobook i just started it this morning when i was grocery shopping but i've been listening i was listening to it like all morning while i was eating and then i was listening to it again later tonight after i finished the book and so i might finish this audiobook tonight instead i don't really know what i'm in the mood for yet but i will let you know tomorrow morning how's it going last night i only read 50 pages of one hot italian summer because i was pretty tired last night but so far it's okay it's kind of like cheesy romance setup but i think it's kind of cute so far i really like both of the main characters so far and like the basic premise of it is that we're following this girl who's a writer and she's like on a deadline to finish her book by the end of the summer but her writing partner like this girl that was her best friend they wrote every book together she recently died and so she's like struggling to write a book without her best friend so her agent offers her her house in italy she says she has another house in italy that she can use to go and like get away from the world and like try to finish her book there and then the first day that she's there this guy and this 10 year old kid pull up on her when she's like naked by the pool they're like what the heck this is our house and she realizes that it's actually the agent's ex-husband's house and she was offering it to her because I guess they were like on a vacation but the vacation got cut short so now they're back but it sounds like the guy's gonna like let her stay at the house anyways for the rest of the summer which you know you kind of have to suspend your disbelief a little bit that some guy would let his would let some stranger like stay with him and his son at his house but uh i mean so far it's cute i really do like the son he, so far like he seems like he's gonna be a really adorable character and he was already talking about interstellar which is so weird because me and rachel were just talking about interstellar yesterday but uh yeah so far it's cute i am feeling nauseous i'm on the way to work i got a pumpkin muffin from winco that i got yesterday so i'm just gonna eat that and then take some medicine and hopefully i'll feel better soon i've always been before but at least i have some characters i laugh like really laugh with my whole Oh my gosh so i just got home from work and how perfectly timed is this that i get this book <laughs> this book is called shipped by angie hawkman and this is a debut that's going on sale in january next year on january 19th the day after my birthday and uh this is so perfectly timed that i just got this in the mail because i was hoping maybe i could get it in time to read this romance during this vlog but this one is one that I'm really excited about because the back description literally says the unhoneymooners meets the hating game. Like, what? Those are my two favorite hate to love romances. And this is like a fun hate to love that uh, they're both up for the same promotion and they have to go to this island, I think. And like, holy shit, is this going to be the unhoneymooners of 2020? I mean, it technically comes out in 2021, so. <laughs> but I think I might read this. For this vlog that would be fun this sounds like something that i would actually really enjoy unlike some of these other ones that i've been reading <laughs> i thought since this is a romance reading vlog i should do some romance covers you know what i'm saying this is one of my faves <laughs>
like playing the faster version like this that she does on the Speak Now tour. I just, I love that performance so much. How about another one? Why not another one? This is from Fearless as well. I love this song and this album. He is sensible and so since I've updated this vlog and since I've read anything. But earlier today, it was a really fun day because we just went over to my parents' house and we had some dinner there. My dad made this amazing potato soup and we were pretty much just playing Mario Kart with them all day and just hanging out. And we got home a little bit ago and ever since I've been home, I started reading Shipped and I am 92 pages into this book and I am absolutely obsessed with it. I think for now I'm just going to save that other book I wanted to read for this, that book One Hot Italian Summer. I think I'm just gonna save that for like another time because this is exactly what I'm in the mood for right now <laughs> and this book is just oh my god it's everything. It has exact unhoneymooners and hating game vibes. Like I was nervous you know when this book compared itself to that because I was like oh my gosh like this is a debut novel and like that's going in with like really high expectations if you compare itself to my two favorite hate to love romances but so far oh my god i'm obsessed with this so if you didn't know anything about what this book is about we're following this girl henley who is working for this company that's like a cruise company she's like working in like marketing and then there's this guy graham who she can't stand because he kind of like took one of her ideas or he kind of like took credit for one of her ideas during their meetings and so she can't stand him but she's never actually met him they only communicate via like you know like phone calls and like emails and stuff because he works for the company but he doesn't live in the same area she does and so at the beginning of this book we we find out that they are both up for the same promotion things get kind of interesting because the company wants them to go on one of the cruises so that they can both like perfectly craft their like pitch to them like i don't know it's it's part of their job and it's like a company trip but they're gonna be the only two going because they're the only two that are up for this position so great oh my god the banter is so spot on already like i'm already having so much fun with it and the fact that it's like a cruise ship and it's just like fun vibes it's like beachy it's summery and the main character has a really interesting sister relationship which is also something that i loved about unhoneymooners and that i just love in books in general i just love a good sister relationship happening and that's definitely happening i don't know so far i'm just absolutely obsessed with it it's making me so happy and warm and fuzzy inside and the hate to love is there like their banter is so freaking cute and i'm already kind of obsessed with both of them so um yeah, I'm just going to continue reading this tonight. I do work tomorrow in the morning, but I'm going to stay up a little bit late tonight probably reading this and then hopefully I can read more at work tomorrow and maybe finish it tomorrow because I love it. <laughs> Good morning. Last night, I read all the way to page 204 and 
I'm loving it so much. Like I'm freaking obsessed with this book. I literally put in like little tabs for like any moment that I wanted to remember either because it was funny or it's cute. And I don't know what else to say other than like I'm obsessed with this book. I don't know if I'm enjoying it like quite as much as Unhoneymooners and The Hating Game, but it's like the exact vibe of those books and I don't know how to explain like it's just very very similar in like plot and characters and just everything about it and I love that and I just really adore these two main characters like so hard like they are so cute together and it's such a slow burn because it's so like hate to love and oh my god I, I just I love it and I'm on the way to work right now I work all day today I'm bringing it just in case I get a break because I would like to read some while I'm on break today and the book is just making me so happy honestly like I feel so giddy and so alive and means themselves brought in with other but the historical evaluation of someone's right we present the problem as pearls, coherence, and efficiencies we hop on a bandwagon of learning standard English or hello again it's like 11 45 at night already where did this day go while i was at work today i only got to page 236 so i like barely read anything while i was on break today i don't know my brain just could not focus today while i was at work and i just wanted to give this book my full attention that it deserves so i just figured i'd save most of it for tonight i have less than 100 pages left so i'm planning on finishing it right now like this one could be my favorite romance of the year i don't know I'd be cutting it pretty close with take a hint danny brown and the roommate which these are both my favorite romances of 2020 right now at the moment but you know shipped might just swoop in there and take the lead but i don't know if that's fair because this one doesn't actually publish until 2021 but like uh, this is greatness right here this is romance greatness i forgot to mention too one of my favorite artists the paper kites just dropped another single today and it's really freaking good so i'm just gonna be sitting here listening to this while i read it's so moody hello good morning last night i finished shipped and this book was so freaking good i'm not gonna lie the ending was just okay for me i feel like the ending just got kind of too much about their jobs and not enough romance for me personally at the end just for my personal taste it was just a lot of talk about their jobs and the promotion you know that was at stake and stuff like that but besides that one little thing little complaint this is definitely one of my new favorite romances i just shipped this couple so hard and while i did find the main character to be a little bit annoying towards the end i still understood in a way where she was coming from because of her life experiences but my god i shipped it so hard you see what i did there you see but yeah i think because of my issues with the end i'm probably going to give this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars so it doesn't get a full five stars but it's still so freaking good and i would still definitely recommend this to anyone who loved the unhoneymooners or the hating game it definitely is like a baby like if those two books had a child it would be this book and graham is just like my ideal male love interest like i just really really adored him because he's so fast with his remarks and like his responses to her and he's so like sarcastic and funny but he's also like really smart and just like really soft on the inside like he just has a whole lot of heart and he's been through a whole lot and i don't know i just i really freaking adored his character in this and i really loved the sister relationship happening in this book too and i feel like they had a really good arc happening and growth and yeah i'm just i'm just so happy that i love this because this really just reignited my love for romance you know because for this whole video reading crazy stupid bromance and the book that i read before this i was thinking maybe i'm broken and i just don't enjoy romance anymore so it's good to r finally read something that's more like my kind of romance and just really love it like i just forgot what it feels like to just read a romance and just be so fucking giddy like that hasn't happened for me since the roommate and then before that it was take a hint danny brown and then before that like i don't know not since last year so it's just been a weird year of like me and romance like i don't know what's going on but i'm so glad that i love this i also did want to mention this is unrelated to this vlog in particular but i was mentioning earlier that i was reading grown by tiffany d jackson in this vlog i listened to the audiobook for this and i finished it while i was in this reading vlog and i didn't really mention it but my god this was also incredible this was a five-star book for me and and this isn't romance by any means this is like a young adult 
hard-hitting contemporary story about men who abuse their power over young girls in the music industry and i've just got to say it was freaking incredible oh my god amazing and i just really enjoyed it so i just wanted to mention that i did finish it and i loved it because i was reading it earlier in this vlog but anyways yeah definitely found a new favorite romance and i'm so happy that i ended up doing this video because it was so much fun and yeah if you've read any of these three books or if you plan to read shipped in January then please let me know let me know what's like your latest new romance obsession like if there's a new romance book that's just, that's just come out recently what is it and do you think I would like it and let me know your romance recommendations and thank you guys so much for watching as always and I will see you very soon with a new video bye what?